Hey everybody, um, this is a clip, a pretty lengthy clip from another video that goes into all the theory behind simplifying radicals. Um, what we're going to look at today is just a matter of if you have a value that you cannot calculate, like root 24, and get an exact value, how we can use factor trees to be able to go through and reduce that radical to a more simple form. So if you're looking more of a how-to video, I think this is your thing. So work your way through it, see some examples. Hopefully you like those factor trees as a means for simplifying radicals. Good luck. I'm gonna give you a moment just to get down problem two. And what I wanna do is I wanna walk through one of the problems that we previously discussed. Let's deal with trying to simplify root 12. Now, my expectation is that every single person sitting in front of me would be totally fine to work their way through Simplifying root 12. You've dealt with reducing radicals in grade 10. Instead, my focus for you is going to be process. How do we do that? So what I want to start off with is a really long, but very clear in theory, solution to simplifying root 12. Okay, here's what I can deal with. I can say to myself, okay, can I calculate the square root of 12? Well, no, I can't, because 12 is not a perfect square. So then I'm going to answer the question, is there two of the same factor in 12? So what I start to do is I start to go like, well, what numbers multiply to give 12? I start to try to factor 12. And maybe I then say, well, I know that 12 is 4 times 3. And if you notice what you just did to that problem, root 12, by writing it as root 4 times 3, you actually made that into a question just like 1b. Take a look at 1b and notice what you have. I have one term underneath my root sign, and so I can take the square root of its parts. So... I can calculate my square root of 4, multiply that by my root of 3. Okay, so now I look at those individual roots. Can I calculate them? No, but I can calculate one of them. I can calculate root 4, and I know that root 4 is 2. But I can't calculate root 3, so I have to leave that operation unperformed. Like, I didn't perform the operation root of 3, so i got to leave the operation in. There we go. There is our reasoning and why we can see that root 12 is equal to 2 root 3. Now, that, as I said, should have been automatic for everybody. Maybe it gave you a little more insight again as to why, but that should have been automatic. What I want us to do, though, is to be able to go from root 12 straight to 2 root 3, and never write that stuff down. It's important that we know that, but I want to avoid writing it. So my best method that I've ever come across to be able to do that is to go back to something that hopefully you got a little introduction to way back in grade 4. Let's deal with some good old factor trees. That I could take my root 12, and I could now make a little factor tree. And I could start branching off that factor tree. I don't know. Maybe that one goes, that one goes, that one. Uh, who knows? I want you to notice, though, that if I do my factor tree down, it's going to take up a lot of space on my page. It's going to make my solution look a lot more difficult than what it really is. So what I do is I just do my factor tree off to the side. So I'm going to take my 12 and I'm going to factor it. Okay, two numbers of multiply to give 12. 4 and 3. And now I look at those branches. Well, 3 is a prime number, so that branch can't go any further. And 4 is a perfect square. And when I'm calculating square roots, I love perfect squares because I can calculate the square root of a perfect square. So take a look at the 4 that I circled in yellow and gold. I can calculate that. The square root of 4 is 2. 
I dealt with that factor. The green factor, the one I circled in green, the three, I can't take the square root of. So I leave that operation in. There you go. When I simplify radicals, maybe I'm drawing off a little factor tree off to the side that can help me to go through and simplify. Now, the other reason why I really like going through and using factor trees is because there's no pressure. Like what I mean by that is for anybody that's like, yeah, but like, what if I don't factor 12 the perfect way? Well, there's no pressure to that. Worst case is, it's just going to take you a little more time, but it's not going to cost you and lead you down a bad path. So what I mean by that is, let's imagine when I ask you, hey, two numbers of multiplying of 12, you instead said six and two. Well, you look at the two, that's a prime number, so we can't extend that branch any further, but we can factor six further. So if I said two numbers of multiply to give six, three and two. Now, I want you to notice that none of those numbers I have are perfect squares. However, remember the question that we ask ourselves when we try to calculate a root. Is there two of the same factor? Well, I have two of the same factor here. And so really what the square root says is, okay, well, when I take the square root of two of the same factor, then I get one of those factors. That is the square root of two twos is one two. Now you could also look and obviously if we went and put those two twos back together, we would get a four and the square root of four is two. Now you look at your factor tree and the only branch that doesn't have a pair of factors and isn't a perfect square, the three, well, then it's left underneath the root. See, it's nice. There's no pressure. It meant that it took me a little longer because I had to draw a longer factor tree. But it doesn't mean that, oh, shoot, I took an approach that won't work or won't help you. So if we acknowledge that we want to be efficient with this, like we want to be quick with it, we want to be correct with it, then your goal when you try to produce your factor tree is to pull the blinders off. You know you can always throw them right back on and just mindlessly go and produce a factor tree. But your goal, can you factor something with perfect squares. Okay, let's take a look at B. What I'd like you to do, go through and produce a factor tree for 18. So off to the side, two numbers of multiply to give 18. Okay, I am hoping that for most of us, we saw that the best way to view that is nine and two. The best way. However, I would have had a bunch of people that if I said, give me two numbers of multiply to give 18, they would have said six and three. I really think the only bad thing you would have done is this. And that's not helping you at all. We want to break something up. So fight the urge to go a number itself and one. I'm going to actually get rid of that because it drives me nuts even seeing it. So if I take a look... My red factor tree, that one I would have to factor a little further. None of those are perfect squares, and the 6 isn't prime, so I could factor the 6 further into a 3 and a 2. Okay, the most ideal factor tree is the purple one, so let's look at the purple one. Look at the ends of your branches. Okay, I can take the square root of 9, that's 3 but I can't take the square root of two, so it's left underneath. There's my answer, three root two. Notice in the red, we get there, it just takes us a little bit. I don't have any perfect squares, so now I'm saying I need two of the same factor. And you'll notice that these two threes, 
there's two of the same factor. At the ends of my branches, I have two threes, so when I take the square root of that, I get one three. The only thing that doesn't have a pair is that lowly two. And there we go. So notice, if we put a little bit of pressure on ourselves, and we say, well, when I want to factor it, let's try to factor it where I get perfect squares in there. I don't want to put so much effort into trying to get a perfect square that it slows me down. Some of us might be way faster on the second factor tree. Your job through practice, you'll get pretty used to going through and trying to factor things in useful ways. Okay, we're going to keep it going. Okay, you see problem C, root 48. What I would like you to do is to go through and simplify that. So pause the video now, give it a shot. Okay, we're back. So we've got the root of 40 and an 8. So I would have bet that I would have a bunch of people that would do this. And it's just because when we go through and we deal with a lot of factoring, factoring tends to take us to the middle of stuff. It's clearly not the best way for us to go through and factor in this instance. Because neither 8 or 6 are perfect squares. But who cares? It gave me one step. Okay, so now I'm going to factor that further. The 8 can be broken up into 4 and 2. The 6 can be broken up into 3 and 2. Now, if I can get you, just fight the urge to want to do this and break the 4 up into 2 and 2. It's not needed, and it does make your factor tree look a lot uglier, which can make it more difficult to simplify. I can stop that branch right at 4 because I like that 4. That 4 is a perfect square. Okay, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to put everything together that I can. I take the square root of 4, so that's a 2. I also notice that I have two twos, and when I take the square root of two twos, I get one two. So I got another two. The only thing that doesn't have a pair or isn't a perfect square is that three, so it's left underneath the root. And the only thing to do is just clean up the way that looks. We can simplify our coefficient two times two, and there's our root three. So hopefully we get down to four root three. Now, I want to go through two other factor trees that I think would have been common. I would have bet that our most common factor tree would have been this. Two numbers that multiply to give 48, I would have had a lot of people give me 4 and 12. What you just have to be careful of is that we don't go and do this. The square root of 4 is 2. I can't take the square root of 12. Because we can clearly see we simplified root 12 earlier. So 12 clearly does reduce. But I would have expected a lot of people to give me 4 root 12 or 4 and 12 as their first lines in their factor tree. Now we take that 12 and we break it apart. I think you really have the blinders on if you then did this. If you broke up 12 into 6 and 2, I want to shake you a little bit. Because if the whole point of trying to get this is to have same factors, then when we see 12, if we've already got a 4 in there, then why aren't we breaking that up into 4 and 3? In this instance, we can actually go a little quicker and say, well, the square root of two 4s is 1 4. What doesn't have a pair, what isn't a perfect square, the 3, it's left underneath. Now, for some of us, we can actually see the best way to factor 48 when it's under a root from that last factor tree. The best way to factor 48, 16 and 3. And I'm going to bet that I have a bunch of people in here who didn't even know 16 times 3 was 48. But that can be really useful when we're under a root. Because now I can take the square root of 16... Can't take the square root of 3. I'm done. Notice, using those factor trees gives you multiple ways to get to the correct expression. 
So there is no pressure. But as I said earlier, the worst case is if you put the blinders on and you don't really think about where you're trying to go, you're just going somewhere, then we might end up taking a longer route. That's all. Okay, take a look at D. We've got two root 20. I want you to go ahead and simplify that. So pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So I'm just going to put a little wavy line down the middle so we don't get that jammed with problem C. Really, the only adjustment for us is that we've got this coefficient of 2 out in front of that root. Well, it's not really a meaningful difference, so I hope that it didn't cause us too many problems. So, we take a look at that root 20. I can't calculate root 20, so I'm going to try to factor it. Everybody should have factored that into 4 and 5. If you went 10 and 2, big time blinders. So, hopefully we dealt with that, and now we can reduce our radical. We just can't forget about the 2 out in front. So, I have the 2 out in front. And now I'm going to reduce that radical. So, I can take the square root of 4. That's another 2. So, I multiply it. I can't take the square root of 5. So, I have my 5 underneath my root. Now, for anybody who looks at that and goes, hey, but why is that multiply? I want you to notice what I circle here. Root 20 reduces to 2 root 5. I have a coefficient of 2 on the root 20. That 2 and the root 20, I don't see an operation in between. And if I don't see an operation, that means multiply. So that's why we have our multiply in between. Okay, I really made that problem ugly with all those circles and arrows. Let's get rid of some of that stuff. The only thing to do, clean it up. 2 times 2 is 4. And there's your root 5. Now, if you ever needed to try to, like, check your answer in a way, this one's going to be a little tougher to check because you now have the mixture of a coefficient and a radical. So how do we now go through and check? How would you have the ability to see if you were good? Well, really what we do is we go backwards. So can I get you to look back at problem C? And let's look at our red solution. If you ever had to confirm, okay, did I do this right? Well, really all I need to do is let's take the 4 and let's put it back underneath the root. Well, to get it out of the root means I take the square root. So therefore, to put it back under the root means I have to square it. So my check would be take the 3 that's underneath and now multiply that by 4 squared. So I'm taking the 3 underneath and I'm multiplying by 16. That's 48. I know I'm good. That ability to check can be useful. However, you're going to notice that in D, if I wanted to check that, I'm going to take my red answer and I'm going to put this in red. I would now have to take that 4 from out, and when I put it back underneath the root, it has to be squared. So I need to calculate 5 times 16. So 5 times 16, that's 80. And if you look, those are not the same thing. And so you, maybe you feel like you lose the ability to check. You don't. Just take a look at your original, and I'm going to deal with that one in green. If I want to get rid of the 2 from out in front and put it underneath the root, then I have to do the opposite operation, which means I need to square it. So I'm calculating 20 times 4, root 80. They both look nice. Okay, you have the ability to take something out from underneath the root, but also to put something back underneath the root. Okay, we can work both operations. Just keep in mind that if we're ever asked to simplify, then we need to get stuff underneath the root. Get it out. Perform the square root operation. Okay. 
I want you to take a look at the two that we've got on the screen right now, and I'm going to give you a good chunk of time to work your way through. So I think E should be a little bit of a gauge for us. Can we go through and reduce a radical like E? That one's going to be your gauge. Do you understand what we're doing up to this point? Question F, yeah, you might look at that and go like, oh, look how huge that is. But I hope that we can see that all that really means is you've got a little bit more work to do with your factor tree. So I want you to go through and get a final simplified form on both E and F. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So we could have a lot of different factor trees on 72. Like there are a lot of ways to break down 72. 72 is like 8 times 9. It's 18 times 4. It's 24 times 3. We got a lot of ways. I am hoping, though, that most of you said, hey, 72 is 36 times 2. And I love that because 36 is the biggest perfect square that I can find in there. And so for us to calculate that, we're going to take the square root of 36, which is 6, and multiply that by the 5. There's my 30. What doesn't have a square or a pair or isn't a square root? The 2, it's left underneath. So hopefully we got that thing simplified down to 30 root 2. Nice. Okay, for anybody who needs another moment, you work your way through F. Pause the video. Otherwise, I assume we're good, and we're going to start producing our factor tree. Okay, so I'm going to go through, and, well, I see the number 8,640, and I really hope we didn't do this. Uh, well, I know 2 goes in because it's even. Because I think we can see that's going to produce a really long factor tree. Like, at the very least, that number ends with a zero, so we know that 10 goes in evenly. And at the very least, we should be able to break that down to that. But maybe we even look at it and we say like, yeah, but like it ends in 40. So like 20 would go in evenly. Well, now we could work our way through. 86 divided by 20 is 4. That's with 6 left over. 64 divided by 20 is a 3. With 4 left over, 40 divided by 20 is 2. And so I like that as our first step. Like, let's divide out a 20 and get down to that point. Okay, now we take a look at that and we can break down both of those branches a little farther. Okay, well, 20, we should be good to be able to break that into 4 and 5. No problem. 432, that starts to work through some stuff. So I could see some people saying, like, I'm going to go 2 because I can see it's even. However, I hope that we also know our little trick as to whether something is divisible by 3. Add up all your digits. So if I do 4 plus 3 plus 2, I get 9. And since that number is divisible by 3 then the greater number is divisible by 3. I'm hoping that that's a trick you have in your back pocket. Now, you might end up saying, yeah, but like, what's the point? If I divide by 2 or divide by 3, like it's not that big of a difference in terms of my factor tree. I'm going to argue, think about what you just said. If a 3 goes in there and a 2 goes in there, so if a 3 is a factor and a 2 is a factor, then that means 6 must also be a factor. So let's take 432 and let's divide it by 6. Let's try to divide it by something a little bigger. Okay, 43 divided by 6 is 7 with 1 left over. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Nice. And now I can factor that thing really quick. Hey, 72 we just did in the last problem. 36 and 2. Now, the only branch that isn't prime or isn't a perfect square is that 6, so I need to factor that further. And if you got down to that as your factor tree, I think you have a pretty efficient factor tree. So now the job is to go through and take the square roots of what you can. 
Okay, I'm going to circle everything that's a perfect square in gold. There's the end of one branch, the end of another branch. Both of those are perfect squares. So I'm going to calculate that. Okay, well, the first thing is I have my coefficient of 4. Now I can calculate my perfect squares. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. Okay, now I'm going to circle any prime numbers without pairs in blue. And I'm going to circle any prime numbers with pairs in purple. So you'll notice we can actually take one more square root. I have two twos in there. I can take the square root of those two twos and get one two. The only stuff that I can't take the square root of, I am going to put back underneath my root symbol. That is my five and my three. So the only thing I have to do now is just clean everything up. Like I have an 8 times a 12 out in front. So if I was to reduce that, that's a 96 or calculate that. And then underneath my root, I have 15. There we go. Not too bad, hopefully. Nice. Okay. Hopefully we check out and we're getting pretty comfortable at reducing radicals. As I said, this is all review for most of us. This is just a day for us to kind of build up some comfort. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to step out of that for a second because I want to take a look again just at what that square root operation really means just to give us a greater context of some things. Now, I want you to take a look at G and look at H. And before you just copy those down, I want to make sure that we're writing this down correctly. One of the common mistakes is we end up writing that as our cubed root of 108. And we just get a little sloppy. I want you to notice that what I just wrote in blue could be very confused for 3 root 108 versus the cubed root of 108. We need to make sure that our 3 is not mistaken for a coefficient when it should have been the root. So when you copy down those problems, please make sure that that little 3 is inside your root, not out in front. Okay, if you're feeling really confident, what I want you to do is pause it, work your way through, and simplify the cube root of 108 and the cube root of 1,512. If we're only kind of a little bit confident, then maybe you're just going to work your way through G first, check in, and then jump to H as you go. Okay, I want you to give them a shot. Pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So we take a look at 108, and we're now asked to find the cube root of it. So that means I'm going to do my factor tree looking for perfect cubes or three of the same factor. So I take 108, and maybe I just go, hey, I recognize 108 is 9 times 12. 108 in my times tables. 9 times 12. Well, I don't like 9 now as the end of a branch. It was great when it was a square root, but now I need the cubed root. So I'm going to factor that further. And there's my 3 and 3. I factor my 12. That's a 4 and a 3. And I'm actually going to probably stop my tree there. There's no point in me now going, well, 4 is 2 and 2, if I can already see that it's not going to get me anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll stop my branch in my red, and now I'm going to find the cubed root. So cubed root says, can you find 3 of the same factor? Yep, I see three threes. So when I take the cubed root of that, I get 1, 3. And I'm left with the cubed root of anything that doesn't have three of the same factor in it, that lowly four. There we go. Hopefully we match up. So there could have been many different factor trees, 
but hopefully we got down to the same thing. Okay, I'm going to give everybody a second just to pause the video again and work their way through H. Okay, give it a shot. Pause it now. Okay, we're back. So let's take a look. 15, 12. Well, I'm not going to just default. I know 2 goes in because it's even. I'm going to do a quick addition of all the digits. 1 plus 5 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Plus 2 is 9. 9's divisible by 3. I have another one of those instances where 3 goes in and 2 goes in, so I know 6 goes in. So if I take 1,512 and I divide it by 6, 15 divided by 6, 6 will go in twice with 3 left over. 31 divided by 6 is 5 with 1 left over. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Okay, now I got my 252. Well, actually, if I check the same thing, that same thing's going to happen again. They're even. And if I add up the digits, I get 9. I know another 6 goes in. Okay, 25 divided by 6 is 4 with 1 left over. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Oh, beautiful. And I love getting down to that factor tree. Because now I can take the square root of it. I have, sorry, the cubed root of it. I have three sixes. So the cubed root of those three sixes is one six. And now I've got the cubed root of seven that I can't calculate. Okay, hopefully stuff matches up. Again, our factor trees don't have to, but our final simplified expressions do. Okay, your job. Jump in and get some practice. Your focus should be reducing radicals. Can we simplify them? But I'm hoping that some of the discussions we've had today about the rectangles or the squares and the cubes, about the possibility versus impossibility of practically building that stuff, but then also some of the conversation at the beginning about number systems gives us a little more of a well-rounded approach to what we're about to get into the next couple days. Okay? Remember, Square roots are not, is there a number times itself? But instead, we're going to transition that question into, are there two of the same factor? So when we see cubed roots, we're just looking for three of the same factor. Fourth roots, fourths. I think you get the idea. Okay, jump in, get some practice. Hopefully everything goes well. Good luck.